Hello, Cancer viewers. Today I'm going to look into what your person is thinking, feeling, um, what they're wanting, what action they might be taking towards you over the next couple weeks or so. So let's get right into it. This could be an ex, could be a new person, could be a lover. I'm just going to see what the what story the cards want to tell. <clears throat> okay, this were, these two are at the bottom, so I'm going to take these two out because I think they wanted to come out. Ace of Cups and Page of Cups reversed. That's really interesting energy. Hmm. Okay. All right, so for the Cancers that are drawn to this video, what is the story? What's going on? With your love life, please be clear and direct. Let the messages be very clear and very direct. Ace of Cups, Page of Cups reverse, the Hangman, the World, the Two of Pentacles, the Eight of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups, the Strength card. The Knight of Pentacles and the Two of Cups. Okay, you have some pretty good energy here, actually. Oh, let me put these down. Oh, come on. <laughs> There's some kind of energy where I feel like a relationship was one-sided, and I think that you're shifting things in your favor now. I don't think it's one-sided anymore. I think there's some type of... You're just, you're in this seductive energy. You see this Nine of Cups energy and the Strength card. It's like your person is seeing you as, I don't want to say unattainable, but I think you're focusing on your own life more. And this could be an ex or a new person that's just noticed you, but they're they're noticing that you're, you're kind of not um, giving them the same amount of attention you used to, or you're just, you're doing things differently now is what I'm getting from this reading. So I think that you're choosing a new perspective here is what I'm getting. With the Ace of Cups, <clears throat> I mean, the Ace of Cups and Page of Cups are similar, but if you see this, this Page of Cups, it's like a very seductive type energy. But it's like you're coming out of that. Like you're not really doing that anymore. So I feel like you had a, like a different approach to relationships in the past um, with the Page of Cups reversed. But you're, you're developing genuine self-confidence. I feel like you're really focused on yourself right now. You're really working on yourself. And that is bringing in your Knight of Pentacles. So I'm going to read these and I'm going to get into this person that's coming in as a result of the um, your confidence and just the work that you've been doing on yourself. Because um, I sense a lot of focus. This is like apprenticeship. This is like mastering new skills. So it could be like studying. It could even be, you know, studying tarot cards or psychic work. But it's, it's also... Um, you know, this could be college, this could be career. There's just this this emphasis that you're just kind of focusing on on yourself, on on bettering your life, on improving your life. You know, you're making this decision here with the two of pentacles. You're you're choosing yourself. You're finally putting yourself first. So this could be even be like a connection that you're you're kind of starting to fade away from. There could be two different energies here, is what I'm saying. There might be somebody new coming in that's gonna match your energy more than this other person did. But I feel like there might be somebody who kind of um kind of just dragged you down, kind of made you question yourself, kind of made you feel like insecure. I feel like you have a natural confidence about you, but this person from your past could be an ex. It might not even be somebody that you were currently just it might not even be that you currently got out of that relationship. It could just be that you're currently getting out of that energy. It could be leftover pain. And you're finally starting to heal and let go of this person that just kind of made you insecure and just dragged you down and made you question yourself. And you're getting back into your natural energy. You're, you're developing genuine confidence finally, where I think in the past you kind of just... Um, have this facade when it came as a confidence like you would you would dress a certain way or you would um god how do I explain that energy it's like you'd walk into a room like oh I'm this shit I'm great you know I'm this I'm that it's like you would you would put so much emphasis on like your style and on like superficial things which you know you know style is part of who you are it's important I'm not saying it's not but I'm just saying it's it's almost like it's, it feels like you, you, you lost your genuine confidence in the past due to a, a toxic relationship that just kind of made you feel insecure. So 
you kind of just covered up those insecurities instead of working on them in the past. So it's like you would focus a lot on your style and your appearance and just, you know, it's, it's that kind of energy. It's like somebody walking into the room just, just, um, with this seductive kind of energy. But then there's, there's, there's a difference between that energy and like natural confidence where you just, you can dress however you want. You can just be relaxed and you just love yourself and you just know who you are, you know, and you're coming into that natural confidence, that natural seduction that you have deep within you, if that makes sense. Um, so it's like in the past, it was like a facade. It was like all about appearance, appearances, all about um, just hiding your insecurities, pretending like you had it all under control and inside you were alone and freaking out, you know, but you, you put on this facade of, of confidence and, and security. But now you're really being honest with yourself and you're really, you're letting go of that, you know, that, that seductive type energy, um, that like the, the chaser, chasey game playing energy. Maybe you have this mentality of like, it's a killer, kill, be, be killed world. Like I'm going to always have the upper hand. I'm not going to let anybody, I'm not going to let anyone in. I'm not going to, or if I do, I'm going to play games or I'm not going to let them, like, I'm not going to let anybody hurt me. I'm the shit. It was that kind of energy. And you're getting through that energy and you're into this Ace of Cups energy where it's like you're drawing real love to you. See, because with this old energy, you would just draw people that, like, liked you for who you were pretending to be. Or they would just, you know, want you because they couldn't have you. Like, they, or they liked, you know, the way you were dressing or the way you were doing your makeup or whatever. But it didn't feel like it was genuinely you. Like, you weren't being your true self before. It doesn't feel like, um, and so you would kept attracting, attracting these men or these women that just liked the, the front that you were putting on for the world, the show you're putting on for the world. They didn't really know who you were, but, um, anyway, I do want to get into this Knight of Pentacles. So let me, let me, oh, sorry, I'll hurry up with this. I just it wanted to give you this message first, but, um, but yeah, you're coming into this Ace of Cups energy. So it's like, you're doing the healing work now. You're letting go of this ex or this family member or friend or whoever it was in the past that really dragged you down and made you doubt yourself and made you feel like you couldn't be your true self, made you feel like you had to put on a show, made you feel like you just, you were just, you felt like you had all these insecurities that you tried to hide, you know, um, with the Ace of Cups, you see, you see, look at the energy difference there. They're both very seductive, but she's like, she's naturally seductive. She has this natural beauty, this natural charisma. She's still, she still cares a lot about her style. She still, she still loves her style, her makeup. She's still doing all those things, but she's like presenting, she's not presenting an image to the world. She's presenting her true self to the world. You know, it's like she's strong and confident and feminine and she just loves herself and knows herself and she doesn't have to walk into her room like competing with everybody or, pret or pretending like she's the shit or whatever. She just she already has that self love. She already has that self confidence. She already knows who she is, um, and that natural charisma, that natural that's genuine confidence that you're building. You know, you're letting you 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 took off the mask and now you're you're focusing on the all these deep rooted insecurities and you're actually addressing them and healing them, and developing a genuine sense of confidence. So it's really, it's beautiful, because you're in this Ace of Cups energy, where it's like you're just, you're, you're still getting a lot of attention, but you're, you're getting attention for, you're starting to get attention for the right reasons, finally. You know, you're not getting attention because you're playing games, or because you feel hard to get, you're playing, you're getting attention because you're being your true self, your, your light is shining out now. Um, you know, you and with the hangman here, you have this this new perspective, basically, this this new way of thinking and doing and feeling. You know, this cycle you, you achieved a goal. This cycle came to an end. You know, you you had to go through that to find out who you don't want to be and who you are. Um, and so this this genuine this genuine healing and genuine confidence, and you're willing to be interest. Your willingness to be introspective and to um to just to just be who you are just your unapologetic raw self is is just so beautiful and it's drawing in the right people um with two of pentacles it's like yeah you had a choice to make and you chose you 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 finally you stopped listening to this person that was dragging you down could have just gotten out of a relationship or again could just be healing from a from a past relationship finally you're finally letting somebody go um with the eight of pentacles yeah you're focusing on yourself this could be school this could be career this could just be yourself in general just healing just new new life skills new communication skills just being who you want to be it's like you're remaking yourself to be the person you want to be 
And, you know, with that, the Nine of Cups, you're not giving your attention to these frogs anymore, to these little boys or little girls that want to play games. You're, you're, um, you know what you deserve and you know who you are and you're not, um, you're not just like desperate for anybody's attention anymore. You're, you, you want your, your Knight of Pentacles, um, and you know, your strength and just your, you, you just, this willingness to really be honest and, and heal. It's drawing in this Knight of Pentacles. that's going to come in with this love offer. Um, yeah, two of cups. This is like a happy, peaceful soulmate relationship. So this person could be somebody that's either in your energy field or like in your energy field in the sense that basically like telepathically like in the astral realm you guys are connecting and this is somebody from your soul group and you're just sort of you're drawing them in your energy is drawing them in your energy is saying I'm open and I'm ready for a real committed healthy relationship I don't need the I don't need the drama and the attention and the chaos anymore I want a real stable healthy relationship finally and that energy um just that just that willingness to be vulnerable to be open with the right people is it's drawing in this this knight of pentacles this is somebody who's who's stable who's loyal who's secure who knows what they want you know you're breaking i think you had an old pattern with men or women um with you know going for a certain type of person and i think that you're i think you're very smart and i think that you're aware of psychology um like i mean psychologically you're aware of patterns you're aware that you have this pattern with people and you're aware of body language too. I think that you, because I think you have the seductive energy. So I think that you, you know about body language, I feel. I think, or most of you do. Maybe not all of you, but I feel like a lot of you do. Like you, you know how to kind of read people. You know how to play it. Um, but I think, I think with that, yeah, you were aware that you were attracted to a certain type of person and that you had this pattern repeating that was subconscious. It was body language. It was this, this, this mental pattern and you're breaking that pattern now, you know, you're really going deep in and working on it and breaking that pattern. And it's, it's going to show, it's going to manifest and have these effects in the physical world, um, with you actually bringing in someone that's going to be stable and loyal and grounded, you know, cause you're telling the universe, your energy is, you have a very powerful, very strong energy and you're telling the universe right now what you want in a relationship. You're telling the universe what kind of man or woman you want. And if you're doing spells or you're praying or you're visualizing or you got like a vision board or something or whatever you're doing, the universe is definitely hearing it. They're hearing what you want. What you're saying you want in a relationship, what you're focusing on, they're hearing that and they're answering that prayer. Um, so, so yeah, you do have this. I'm going to look into him or her. And, you know, it could be female, female, could be male, male, could be male, female. It's whatever the energy is. So don't get too caught up on gender. Sometimes I just say him because that's just how I channel because I know the majority of my user of my viewers are women. But, um, you know, this could be a gay or lesbian relationship, too. And it could also be um, you could be a man. This could be um, a female coming in. So it's whatever. Just just don't get caught up on, on gender when I say it. Um, anyway, so yeah, two of cups. This is like a peaceful, happy, stable relationship. This is a this is a love offer. Let me see what else I can get on this person. OK, so cancers. What can you tell me about this Knight of Pentacles? What can you tell me about him? Ooh, hello. Hello. Eight of Wands. Good energy. Knight of Swords. Judgment. So for some of you, I feel like there could be a second person coming in too. Because it's like you've got like speed and just, just, just like this motion, this passion, like this, this fast moving energy here. So for an ex that lost you, it could be the ex coming back around, but you're making a judgment call and you're like, you know what? I don't really know if I want that um, anymore, you know, because I think you're going to want your knight of pentacles more because pentacles is more of like a stable grounded energy where swords can be kind of harsh. It can be a little like, like, I don't know, like I feel like this person was like condescending with you or they just, I don't know, they just made you insecure. So it makes sense that they would come out as, as a knight of swords. Um, I mean, it can be good. It's like a strong masculine power, but there's also like the negative side of the Knight of Swords, I feel, and at least in this reading is what I'm getting is like, yes, he can be strong and masculine when he wants something, but he can also be condescending and controlling too. Uh, but you're making a judgment call. And this could also just be a second person coming in. It might not necessarily be an ex. It could just be a Knight of Swords, just somebody who's very strong, who's very brave coming in. And you're going to be making this judgment call um, between these two men, I think, between your Knight of Swords and your Knight of Pentacles. So, yeah, that's really interesting energy. Uh, 
All right, can we look more into the Knight of Pentacles? Because I want to know about him. I want to know about him. Let's see what's going on with it. What can you tell me about the Knight of Pentacles? A priestess of water. Could be a water air, or air sign. Movement. Lust. Denial. What is lust and denial about? Summon a new beginning. Okay. I think it's just a, a warning not to fall, fall back into old routines. Because I think, you know, with like the lust card here, it's like you have that old mentality that you're still healing from of kind of like having to have the upper hand and like not thinking anybody could love you and like genuinely want you. So it's like, don't let that, don't repeat that pattern. You know what I mean? Like don't be in denial. Like you do have a new start here with this person. There is that potential there. So don't let it like just be lust. Don't let it, don't play that game. You know what I mean? Like when you do find the right person, it's, it's, like, when you find your warrior, when you find your person, they're not going to play those games. You know what I mean? So it's saying, yeah, that's what it's saying. Um, can you tell me about his personality, though? Like, what do we need to know about the connection? Letting go. Yeah, again, there's a very strong, so it says letting go, complicated oath. So there's a very strong energy of... Um, Letting go of that need for continuing to work on yourself, you know, continuing to let go of the need for drama or complications or attention or negative attention or, you know, chaser, chasey relationships. It's, it's like letting go of that. Don't when this person comes in, I think that it's going to scare you more than you realize. I mean, you are doing the healing work, but I think you're also probably alone right now or maybe talking to someone here or there, but you don't have any really deep, serious feelings for anybody right now, I feel, unless it's like the ex that you're healing from. But I mean, I don't feel like there's anything like, I'm not getting the energy that there's somebody like stable that you're just sure about right now. You know what I mean? And so I think when this person comes in, I think it's really going to scare you. I think you're going to feel like you're ready for this person, but then when they come in and they're just ready to, like, just completely love you like nobody else has loved you and just, you know, take the good and the bad and everything, I think that I think that it's going to trigger you. I think there is going to be some fear of... It could be, like, past abusive relationships or control or just getting hurt in general from relationships. It's, like, I think that... I think that this fear is going to come up and I think part of you is going to want to self-sabotage and you're going to want to challenge this person and you're not going to be used to like a healthy, stable relationship. Um, and so it's going to be like, you're going to have to let go of like the need for things to be complicated, the need for like, you know, if, if th that, that belief, I think you have this belief you have to heal that if something's really good, it can't last. Or if something's really good, then it can't be real. You know, like you, you question everything, which is, it's good. It's good to, to be prepared and be logical. I'm not saying it's not. Like it is important if you have a pattern with abusive people to be aware of the red flags. You know, it is important, important to be stable and grounded and, and, and logical and, and be aware of the red flags and the green flags. But there's a difference between being aware of the red flags and like having boundaries and um, just completely challenging somebody and sabotaging them or sabotaging the, the connection and constantly questioning them and constantly trying to control them and constantly comparing them to your ex that did this or this or this, you know? Like this person isn't your ex. So when this person comes in, like you need to be aware of that. You need to be aware that they are going to trigger you because you're going to have this this healthy, stable, normal relationship. You're going to have this person that just wants to build with you and grow with you and love you. And you're not going to be used to that. You're going to be like, what the what is this? Like, are we going to fight? What are we going to do? There's this like kind of addiction to drama, I think, that you still have that you have to work through. Um, so, yeah, it's just saying like when when this person comes in, like be aware it's going to scare you. It's going to trigger you. Um, and you and you have to work through that. You have to have a good balance between logic and emotion. You have to have a good balance between being cautious and watching for red flags in a new relationship and 
you know, at the same time, not sabotaging a good relationship and not putting way too much pressure on somebody that you're just getting to know. You know what I mean? Like you got to have, you got to find that, that healing and you got to find that healthy middle ground so that you can be safe and protected and have boundaries, but also give a new person a chance and, and slowly get to know them and, and, and open your heart to the right person. Um, but I mean, as an empath, you do have to protect yourself too. So don't, don't, Don't jump. I think you're an intense person. So I think in the past you jumped from one extreme to the other. Like you let everybody in or you let nobody in. And so you have to find that balance. You let some people in and then you cut some people out. You know what I mean? And other people, you have to take it on an individual case by case basis. Like some people, it's going to take you months to build trust. Other people, it's like it's going to be more natural. It's going to happen sooner. Um, And it kind of depends on the red flags and the green flags. So you have to kind of try to see it from like, a different perspective, like an individual case by case basis. Like, is this, you know what I mean? Like each person, it's going to be different, but you can't just like generalize and just shut everybody out or let everybody in. Like you got to find that healthy balance, um, and match people's energy and let them in if they're doing the right things and they're saying the right things and their actions are in, in alignment with their words and, you know, then let them in slowly. Um, and if they're not doing those things, then don't let them in. You know, you you gotta you just gotta find that balance, and you gotta let go of the drama and and the and the, the need for things to be complicated, and you gotta keep stepping out of your comfort zone and keep changing, keep working on yourself, keep changing those patterns, keep keep talking to the universe. The universe is listening. Keep telling the universe what you want in a in a in a romantic partner. Keep visualizing it. The the visualizations, the the manifestation, it's definitely working. Um, but yeah, just be prepared because you're. You do want this. I'm not saying you don't want this. I'm just saying that when it does come in, it's going to scare you more than you realize. Um, and so you want to be careful not to sabotage. So yeah, so we have, the, and this person's coming in with an oath. This person is, again, stable, grounded, loyal. This person is, again, not going to be what you're used to. But that also means, like, you can't do things the way you did with, with other people. Like, in the past, you you dated these little little boys or little girls that like you could play games with and then they'd play games with you and there was the drama and the complication you're you're manifesting a real man or a real woman and this person isn't going to play those games if you play hard to get they're going to be turned off if you if you try to make them jealous you try to play games they're going to be turned off they're not going to they're not going to react to it the way people in your past have reacted to it. You know what I mean? Like they're going to know who they are and what they want. And they're going to want honesty and vulnerability and stability from you. So just be prepared for that. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> yeah, listening. They're going to want, you know, they're going to want like a real healthy, honest relationship where you guys listen to each other. And there's, yeah, there's a lot of hope here. And vision, you know. I think, like I was saying, this person could be somebody that you're already telepathically connecting with. In they're at the very least, they're in your energy field where it's like astrally telepathically, you guys are connecting. This is somebody from your soul group that you're drawing in. You know, your visualizations, your prayers, your manifestation, it's all working. Um, for others, this is actually somebody you already know who's just kind of watching you on the sidelines. Like, they know that there's more to you than what you present to the world, but maybe they haven't stepped forward yet. Maybe they're just not sure yet. But they're, they're, this person is noticing you. This person is definitely, um, their energy is definitely around you. So, so yeah, that, that's definitely coming in for you. I, I do, and I do feel that at least. I, I think it should be. Uh, so if this resonates, please go ahead and subscribe. And if you would like a private reading, my email is below. Thank you.